This Sigma is a very special lens. This is a very special lens to me because last March I visited the Sigma factory in Aizu, Japan. And I saw one of the first pre-production samples there and I was highly impressed even though I was not allowed to take any pictures with that lens. After chatting with Mr. Kasuto Yamaki I was sure this is going to be an exceptional lens when it finally comes available to consumers. This lens took about two years to develop and it was originally designed for astrophotography because one of the lens designers at Sigma is a keen astrophotographer and he wanted to design the perfect lens for this purpose. His goal was also to beat the Zeiss 135mm f2 Apo Sonar which I've been told is some sort of a benchmark for astrophotographers. And this is the result. Thanks to the Finnish importer Foka, I've been able to use this lens for a few days now. Everybody wants to know if it's optically any good. And hell yes, it's very very good indeed. The sharpness and contrast are awesome at every aperture. I didn't measure the lens, but the 50 megapixel sensor of this Canon 5D SR was not a major challenge. I shot mostly wide open because that's what you buy this lens for. There is a bit of vignetting wide open but it's not distracting in most situations. The bokeh is very clean. There are no onion rings and almost no so-called bokeh fringing. And that is unusual for a high-speed lens. All in all the bokeh is creamy smooth. This lens will melt even the roughest background. So the optical performance is great, no question about that. But this lens is also very impractical. It's really large and heavy and lugging it around is not pleasant. It's more like hard work. This is not a lens for any casual shooting or traveling or something like that. There is no image stabilizer so Canon and Nikon users will have to use high enough shutter speed or a tripod. There will be a Sony FE version later this year and that can take advantage of the Sony's in-body image stabilizer which will help a lot uh, in handheld shooting. It's very hard to recommend this lens even though it's a stellar optical performer and the price is very attractive too. I guess if you are an astrophotographer this is a no-brainer. And I think many people will buy this for portraits and general photography as well. But I predict that many will find this impractical after some time and they will not use it that much after all. But then again with this Sigma 105mm f1.4 you can make some images that really stand out and it's very hard to make similar images with any other lens at least in this price point. And why didn't I shoot any stars if this is designed for astrophotography? Well, I'm not much good at that, but the main reason is that it's summer here in Finland and it's impossible to see the stars. The sky is blue even in the middle of the night. I'd have to wait for another month or two to be able to see any stars. I hope you enjoyed my review and I'll see you next time.